Hey guys, it's Hades here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be telling you what is Minecraft and how to play it. This is a tutorial for beginners only or people who have never seen Minecraft before. If you're an expert already, you probably won't learn anything this episode, but feel free to watch it. You might pick up a thing or two. Alright, so I actually decided to make this video because of my girlfriend. She was like, what is Minecraft? What is this game? Why is it so good? And I'm going to tell you exactly why it is so good, and exactly why it is one of the most played video games in the world. So to start off, you've got single player and multiplayer, like any good game should have. They're basically the same, multiplayer just lets you play with other people, pretty self-explanatory. You can do basically the same thing on both. So we're just going to explain this whole series, or this little video in single player, to make it a bit easier. Here are your worlds. So these are all my offline worlds, and the basic idea of these is they're basically only me, and I've got various ones for different things. So I'm going to explain these different things now. When we go into create new world, you can name it, just to identify it. And then there's game mode. So survival is the number one game mode on most, most single player games, and most servers as well. Well, factions is that, but we'll get into that later. So survival, that is you search for resources, crafting, gain levels, health and hunger. There is no end to the game. To start off, you might be like, what? How can you play single play without an end? You can keep surviving forever. And even if you die, you just respawn anyway. So it's not really survival, but you get, you'll get the point once I jump into the game. So this one is just building resources. You could almost call it the legit and default version of the game. And then you've got Hardcore, which is just the more hardcore version of Survival. Where if you die once, then the game is over. You cannot keep playing. It's, it's over in one death. That's the only reason why there's Hardcore. Not many people play it, to be honest. A few YouTubers do, but that's about it. Then we have Creative. Now, that's, this is also a very popular game mode. Unlimited resources, free flying, and destroy blocks instantly. That's basically for people who want to build massive projects... Like, people build computers in Minecraft, people recreate maps on other games, so like Borderlands, or Gears of War, or Halo. They'll just go onto creative and they can rebuild another map that they've seen in another game and show it off to their friends. It just basically looks good, pretty much. That's what creative is for, building, and exploring, and working out new technologies in Minecraft, things like that. And then, well that's it for the single player world, but... Once I'll jump into one, let's jump into a creative world first. So I'll show you this, we'll name this world Creative. And we just click, there's some more options here. Um, I'll quickly go over this actually, really quick. So structures, Minecraft randomly generates the map. So you can walk in a straight line forever, it'll never end, and it just generates stuff. And this is if you want to generate villages and dungeons which are just in-game things, which I might be able to find one for you. And cheats, that, that really, that doesn't matter when you're on creative, but when you're on single-player survival, you want to turn cheats off, because they're just, they're literally cheats, that's what they are. Bonus chests are just an extra chest when you spawn to give you some extra resources. And world type, we've got a few here, so we've got large biomes, which just means... Sometimes there's grass, sometimes there's snow, and if you make them large, there's large areas of grass, large areas of snow. That's pretty much it. And super flat, the world is perfectly flat, and there's no hills or trees or anything. Anyway, let's just go to default, create a new world. And there's, as I said, this is the creative version. I spawn looking into a tree, that's a good example of Minecraft. You, you randomly spawn in a map and everything randomly generates. So over there is a snow biome, it randomly generated, it's got snow, these type of trees. Over here, I'm pressing F3 to bring up this menu, and we're in a desert, so that's the type of biome, and that's why there's sand, and there's a bit of water, and some cactuses. And if I double tap spacebar, I can fly. So just by double tapping spacebar, I can now fly, and all the blocks are one, they just get destroyed in one hit, when you're in creative. Just like this. And I can press E to bring up my menu. And seeing as I'm in creative, I have every resource in the game in this menu bar here. So I can go building blocks. 
I can just scroll through them and be like, I want to build something out of this wool colour, and I want to build this wool colour, and I want to build a house out of this wood. And you can get tools, but they're useless in creative. Really creative is just to design stuff with blocks. So I'll grab some of this real quick. Alright, so I'm flying with spacebar. You can double tap spacebar to get out of flying mode, or you can press spacebar to go up and shift to go down. So if you're doing something really technical in a creative project, you want to just go up a tiny bit and then go down, place the block. That's what it's good for. So we can fly just over here, and I can start placing blocks. So I just, I'm just right-clicking to place down these blocks, and I can just build whatever I want. The normal things people build for, the people who play creative, is they build just to build something that looks nice. But this is not going to look nice because it's terrible. I mean, it's wool. No one builds stuff out of wool. But this is my design for a room anyway. It's not very good. It's kind of Australian. Green and gold. That's good enough for me. That's my reason behind it. And that's it. That's, that's, all, that's the whole point to a creative right now. Is just to build stuff. Now, I particularly build stuff on my YouTube channel for my servers. So I build spawns that I then host up on a server, and then people join and have a look at it, and they go, wow, hey, that's a nice spawn, good job, bro. So that's why I build in creative. But there is lots of reasons, and some people do it to design something before they do it in survival. Because in survival, when you press E on the keyboard, it doesn't bring up this, it brings up this. And you don't have access to anything unless you find it in the world. And it's a lot harder to find these resource, resources when you're not in creative. Which I will be showing you soon. So I'll just quickly finish off creative. So you can place blocks. A lot of people use creative to test redstone circuits. And redstone is basically like electricity wire. This is the on switch. That's the wire. This is the output. So see how it's powered now? And that turns that on. Now it's not powered so it's turned off. And people build it all in creative because they have unlimited resources. That's why people build stuff in creative. Either to test it out, see if it looks good, or for another server or a map. There's tons of reasons. Creative is great. It's great game mode. Access to everything right here. And that pretty much sums it up. Um, there's a search by here. Search, click here. And you can type in search items. So I want to find gold. And then this is everything with gold in the name. So I can grab a gold block, get out of that, and it's pretty good, because now I've got a gold block and I can build something out of gold. Right there. And that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else directly related to creative. Um, no, that should just about do it. Let's exit this world, save and quit, just like that. We'll go single player again. So that was creative, that's, that's pretty much creative summed up in a nutshell. We're going to create a new world now, it's going to be survival. And this is what most people play. This is what my Let's Play Minecraft series is based on. I'm in a survival world with no cheats, and you can just name it whatever. Create new world, The similar options, similar options. Once we get in this world... It's building the train. It randomly generated more train around us. So this time, I'm pressing F3 to bring up this. And it basically just gives you a bunch of information. I'll bring the mouse here just to go over this information. Frames per second. That's how fast your computer's going, pretty much. Chunk updates. That doesn't. That's not really going to affect you. Ignore that. Memory use. You want to make sure that's below, say, 80%. But allocated memory. Yep. You don't... Don't need to look into that unless you're running into lag problems. Over here is a couple things to do with entities and what mods I'm running. So I'm actually got Optifine installed. That's where my mod is right there. But for basic users, it's all pretty irrelevant. Except for this bit, your coordinates. X, Y, and Z. It is the coordinates 130, 74, 256. And they are the blocks I'm standing on. See if I move this way. The coordinates on the X is going up because I'm walking in this direction. So every block I go, the X goes up one. I'm on 163, 164, 165, 166, 
I turn this way, that'll move the Z axis. So now the Z is on 257, now 258. And that's how you can identify where you are on the map. So if you're on this with a friend who's over there, you can be like, I'm at 166X and 269Z. And the Y, the Y right here is your height. So if I go and jump right now, see the Y is changing? The Y is how high up I am. So if I go lower on the ground here, it'll go down. If I climb up, the Z will get high. I mean, the Y will get higher. So that's pretty self-explanatory. X is one direction, Y is your other direction. No, no, Y is up and down, and Z is your other direction. And F, you can pretty much ignore that. That's whether you're facing west, north, east, south. So you can say someone to go south from their current location if you want to meet up somewhere, but not many people use that. Alright, so let's get out of the F3 menu by clicking F3 again. Now that you know how that works, you can identify where you are on the map. So if you build your home somewhere, you can press F3, get the coordinates, and write them down so you don't lose your home. That's a lot of problems people have when they first log in. And that solves that problem. So coordinates done. Ticked off the checklist. Now I'm in survival. You will see I can move around with WASD and I can sprint by double tapping W. So just by double tapping W I can now sprint and I can run and jump. Jump is spacebar of course. And I'm going to press E right now to bring up this menu. But seeing as we're in survival we don't have access to anything. I literally can't, cannot place any blocks, I just have my fists, but I can pick up blocks by holding down left click. So see right now I'm holding down left click and I'm picking up blocks and they're going in my inventory. Right there is my inventory, but once this gets filled up it'll start filling up these. Just like that. So now that I have blocks I can place these down. As you can see the number here is going down every time I place it, now I'm out. So in survival, you can only put down what you pick up, and that's why it's a lot harder, and that's why there is no end to the game. Because you can continue building as much as you want. Alright, so right here was a randomly generated structure. This one's called a village. And if we walk over here, you'll see that there is actually villages that have spawned. So this is getting into a bit more technical, but this is just a little lighting glitch. If you walk into it, it fixes it. Alright. So this randomly spawns on the map, just like everything else, except you can right-click these villagers to talk to them. Right-clicked, and they got a little inventory. This is a bit harder to explain. You can basically trade stuff for stuff. So I right-click to this guy. If I give this guy fish, if I drag and put it in here, he'll give me emeralds. So if I drag nine fish in here, this guy will give me one emerald, and I can take it out, put it in my inventory. It's basically like a trading system. But I can't trade anything with them now, because I have nothing to offer. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Let's just pretend I didn't find this though. Because that's pretty lucky to find a village. Let's pretend I'm playing normal survival. What you'd want to do is walk straight up to these wood. Hold left click until it breaks. And as you can see I'm collecting wooden blocks right now in my inventory. Wooden blocks. I can move stuff around just by clicking in here. I can shift click to bring it straight to my hotbar and shift click to put it straight back into there. But let's gather a bit more wood so I can go into more details of how to survive in a survival world. So, we've got to gather quite a lot of wood. Because nearly everything in Minecraft that you build is based off wood. So let's gather up some more. Here we go. There's another wood block. There's another one. I'm just getting a fair amount so I don't have to go back to it. I probably won't end up using this much, but we'll see. Just keep punching it. Alrighty. There we go. I got some wood now. Alright, so this is your crafting bench. This is all you have access to when you first start the game, where my mouse is pointing. And you want to drag your wood in there, and it basically converts it into wooden planks. So we're going to turn it all into wooden planks just by clicking here. Put it back in our inventory. Now we have wooden planks. And with wooden planks, you can build tons of things in Minecraft. Boats, sticks, tools, you can build everything with wood. Just to start off, we're going to click here. There's a button. If we wanted to build a button, we could make one by putting it just in like that. 
but I don't want to do that. I'm going to right click it to split it in half and place it below to make wooden sticks. I'll grab a couple of these sticks out. I just did that by clicking as well. And then with the sticks, we're going to use this to make tools. But the number one thing, actually I should have done this first, is you want to put one piece of wood in each square and that'll make you a crafting table. And what the crafting table does, you can move it here and then right click to place it down. What it does is it brings up a bigger grid. So now we can build more stuff because we have more squares. As you see when I press E I only have four squares to build so there's a limited amount of stuff I can build. I can still build everything normally if it only takes less than four squares but now I can build stuff that takes up to nine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a wooden pickaxe. You build a wooden pickaxe by putting three across the top and then two sticks down like this. There you have it, a wooden pickaxe. Alright, now the next tool I'm going to show you to build is a shovel. You put two sticks and a piece of wood up here. I'll grab the shovel. One more tool, the most important one, is an axe. I'm going to grab an axe. And I'll actually build every type of tool, just to show this off. There we go, there's the hoe. Wooden hoe, just like that. That was built with two sticks here, two pieces of wood like that. And that is all the tools. You can shift click to take these back into your inventory clicker, quicker. And now I have every tool in the game pretty much, all the basic ones anyway. Pickaxes, they are for mining stone or stone materials. If we come over here, this is sandstone, so the pickaxe mines this up fairly quick. But if you see if I go to punch this, it takes a lot longer, so that is why we use pickaxes. Oh, lava, cover that up. Alright, so hopefully you understand that. Pickaxe is for any stone type material. That is a stone type material. Stone brick slabs, or stone slabs. And this is sandstone, so that's why it works. That's why the pickaxe is good. Shovel, the shovel is used for sand and dirt. Any dirt, sand, gravel material, the shovel is what you need. As you see, it weighed, it quickly gets rid of it, compared to if I decide to use a pickaxe for this job. As you can see, it's clearly taking longer. I use my fists. It takes, fists are actually quicker than pickaxes there, that's a bit weird. But anyway, look at the shovel go. The shovel does it much quicker, it's way more efficient. That's why you want to make a shovel for that job. Axe, you'll never guess what it's for, guys. It is for wooden materials. So that works for wooden trees, like this, or wooden houses, any type of wooden material. The axe is what you want to do to get it done quicker. So there we go. I'm mining wood way quicker now with that. Now for the last tool, the hoe. It's pretty useless for most things. I wouldn't even call it one of the main tools, but if you use it on grass or dirt, it'll hoe the land. It's basically a farming tool. I'm just left clicking to hit all this grass away. Just like that. So I've hoed the land here. And if there was water here, it would hydrate this. And I could plant these seeds that I got. I got the seeds from punching the grass. There's other ways to get it, but... I can now plant the seeds on this hoed land. And now it is a farm. So that will slowly grow. You can add bone meal to it to make it grow faster. But it is basically a farm now. We've hoed the land. There, we've planted our seeds, and now they'll see just grew right in front of your eyes right there. When that fully grows, you'll be able to make food out of it. And as you can see, I'm just going to go here so I can get my mouse up. I can probably, yep, yeah, there we go. So here is your hunger bar. That's why you need food, and that's why you need farms. You need to grow farms to get food. You hold right click to eat the food, and it'll bring up your hunger. Because when this hunger gets to nothing, depending on what difficulty you're playing on, you'll start to lose hearts. And hearts are your life like every other game. The moment we got full hearts, when this goes to zero, you die. And you respawn somewhere in the world where the respawn point was set. So hopefully that explained that a bit. Let's try and dig further down. Because Minecraft is all about mining. When I first played it, literally mining was all I did. Let's dig this down. We're going to dig down a bit further. Just like that. You dig a little stairway so we can jump back out if we need to. But we have found stone here. 
And that is the first material you will want to gather when you start playing Minecraft. This stone right here is what I'm gathering right now. And that's why I built this wooden pickaxe, so I could get the stone. If I go to punch this with any material other than a pickaxe, look, it does basically nothing. All of these tools are doing basically nothing. It'll take me like a very long time to punch this. Look at this. Let's see how long it takes. There we go. And I don't even think I got the stone from that, did I? I'm not even sure if you get stone from punching it. That's tested. I got three in my inventory right now. If I punch this, will I get four? No, I will not. So that's something I didn't actually know. You can't you cannot pick up stone without a pickaxe. See if I hit the pickaxe now it drops a block there. If I hit this one, I can go and pick them up. Now I have five. So you actually need to build a wooden pick. You can't just go down here and punch the stone to get it. So we're going to gather a bit more of this. So I can show you a few more examples. There we go. Gathering up stone. Now that I have stone, I can build better tools. And you may be thinking, we just built tools. Why do we need more? That is because the better tools you have, the more efficient they are. So let's go back to our table here. If we do the exact same thing... See, if I do this, it makes a wooden pickaxe. Self-explanatory, if I do this with cobblestone, it'll make a stone pickaxe. So now the stone pickaxe is way better than the wooden pickaxe. I'm never going to use that again. See how it says durability? He can hit a total of 59 blocks before this tool breaks. This one can hit a lot more. We just got to hit a block to get that stat to pop up. There we go. 130 out of 131 blocks. So with the stone tools, we can hit 131 blocks. Let's get away from that spider. Hostile mobs will kill you when you're playing survival. And seeing as I have no armor or weapons, I'm very likely to die. So that's why I'm running away. I'm going to get this resources out of this chest. The chests randomly spawns in towns. So I just right clicked the chest and then I clicked all the items to bring it into my inventory. Now you, you might not be as lucky as me by getting a town spawning here and you might need to gather all those resources yourself. But it's kind of lucky for me because I get to show it off in the tutorial. So here is actually a working bench that was randomly spawned in the world. And I'm going to continue going through the, with the tutorial. I've got food here. Let's eat some of that first. You just bring it in. You just I'm using my scroll wheel to scroll between all the tools here. And I just scroll to the bread. Hold right click. It eats, it eats it, and as you see, my hunger bar gets filled up. And when my hunger bar is full, I start regenerating hearts if I did take any damage. Alright. Now that we have mobs in the world, we'll want to build a sword. It's the same with wood. You get a stick, two pieces of wood, build you a sword. But don't worry, I don't need that. I need cobblestone, because I'm going to make a stone sword, which is stronger and does more damage than a wooden sword. But on that same note, stone isn't the best sword you can get. It goes, I believe the order is wood, wooden tools, um, stone tools slash gold tools. They're both pretty bad. You will not want to be building any gold tools. I would actually say it goes wooden tools, then gold tools, then stone tools, then iron tools, then diamond tools. And these ores here, you get from in the ground. So you actually need to make stone tools. Go digging down straight under the ground until you find um, these ores that are put into the wall. They look like slightly discoloured blocks. I might jump into creative later and show you these blocks. But basically when you're mining you will find these resources. Once you find them you can do the exact same thing and make tools out of it. So we're making a another pickaxe right here, an iron pickaxe. This is better than the stone pickaxe. And if we did have diamonds... We could do the exact same thing and make a diamond pickaxe, which would be even better than the iron pickaxe. But anyway, let's go kill some mobs. See right there, you just left click to attack them with your sword. And you you want to use a sword, guys. Any other tools and it'll take you ages to kill them. Taking me long enough with a sword. Alright, so here's an enemy here. Skeleton. They shoot arrows at you. Creepers. They blow up. I'm actually going to show you one blowing up. If you stand too close to it, boom. Blows up, destroys all your work. So you've got to be really careful with that. I'll show you how to take one on. You want to hit it and jump back. 
See, that still blew up. I call that rigged, and that's why everyone hates creepers. They're not meant to explode if you're not within a certain amount of blocks from them. But as you can see right here, I lost some hearts. And they're slowly regening. But I c that's because I have full hunger, and I can't eat anymore because my hunger is full. And that's why my hearts are regenerating. But let's actually take this for a little shot. Let's go underground. And I'm going to try and find you guys some different resources. So once you get the basic resources like I have now, you'll, you'll be wanting to go underground. Because underground is where you'll find all the good resources. So off we go. And we've run into our first block of resources already. See how the stone is cut slightly discoloured with black? That's because this is coal. And if we mine this up, instead of getting blocks, we get this coal stuff. And there's a random amount that spawns together all the time. I'll show you what it looks like in the inventory. Coal, right there. And this is what you use to build torches. You put it on top of sticks. So you make some sticks using the two wood. I'll make it again just so you learn. So wooden plank here, wooden planks there. Get the sticks. Put it there. Put coal on top of that, you can get torches. Now there's a massive amount of stuff, guys. I cannot go into how to build everything in Minecraft right now because there is so many possibilities. And they keep adding more, like every few weeks there's an update to adding something new to the game. That's what makes it so exciting. If you think you know everything, they'll release something else. And you can just you can just keep exploring those possibilities. That's why I like this game so much. That's why it's so exciting. To place these torches, I'm just right-clicking. Same as every other block in this game. You right-click. And technically, this block is... This game is all run by blocks. So even though there's a torch there, I cannot place anything else. Look. See, if I want to place something in that same block, I can't. Because there is a torch there. And everything in this game registers by whole blocks. Even if it looks like it doesn't take up a block, it does. If I go to place something there, it'll just place it here. Because I can't place anything there. You just got to pretend that torch is a whole block. Alright. Let's see if I can dig down and find some more resources. To ex explain the tools a bit better. Because you can't make tools out of any resource. You can only make it out of wood, stone, gold, iron and diamond. This is gold, this is iron, diamonds. You can only find when you dig really far down. They're really rare if you do find diamonds. And gold's also fairly rare. So I don't know if we'll find any this episode. There we go. This is, this is turning out to be a fairly well scripted episode. It's almost like I'm doing this on purpose. We found some iron here. Now to get this iron, you can tell it's iron by the colour it is. And to get this iron, you actually need a stone pick. I can't mine this with a, an, uh, um, a, a, a wood pick. I'll try it right now just to test it. I have a wooden pick mining this iron right here. Let's see if I get it. No, it got destroyed. I did not get the iron in my inventory, as you can see. Just by pressing E, bring up this inventory. I did not get it. So that is, that's bad, guys. That is why you need to build a stone pick. Because once I get the stone pick, I can pick up the iron. Now that I have the iron, I can, I can cook this iron. I can't actually use it yet. I've got to turn this block into this ore. See, iron ore, iron ingot. The ingots is what you use to build tools, and the ores are what you use to make the iron. So let's show you that real quick. We need to make some more wooden planks. Put it like this to get a crafting table, just because I can't be bothered going up and getting another one. Put it down. If we put cobblestone around like this, it'll build a furnace. We'll take the furnace out, put the furnace on the wall here, We'll put the coal in the bottom. You can use coal or wood to cook stuff. So wood will work or coal will work. Most people use coal or charcoal. And then you want to put the ores in the top. And see how that fuels it? And then this is like a loading bar. And the output will be put here. Bam! We have iron ingots now. So that's how I turn the ores that I pick up underground into usable ingots that we can use to build items and tools and stuff. So there we go, I've got more iron now and I can build more tools. So I'm probably going to build a sword next, because swords are really important in surviving, because there are heaps of enemies out there that want to kill you. 
So you want to be geared up, just like that. Stick down there, remember that was how we built the sword? It's the same no matter what resource you use. And we're, I'm just pressing, I'm just jumping back up here. Let's go. Da, da, da. And for those who are really new to Minecraft, I would suggest not trying to learn this by yourself. Even the pros use Wikipedia. You have no idea how many times I've been like, how do I build that item? I want to build something, how do I build it? You've just got to go to Google and type in whatever item it is, and the first page will be the Minecraft Wikipedia. Let's take this guy out. So you hit him and walk backwards at the same time. Oh, he nearly exploded then. Let's go for a double hit now to kill him. Yep, he's gone. So I killed him and he drops XP. I could actually explain XP now. This is going to go on forever because Minecraft is an endless game and there's so many features. But basically, those enemies that you saw before, the ones that want to kill you, there's enemies over there that don't want to kill you. So there's pigs and stuff which you can cook for food. Exactly the same as I heated up that ore. I can kill this pig. That one didn't drop any meat. That's a bit rare, but let's kill this one. Drop me some meat. There we go. So he dropped this. And I'm going to actually build another crafting table because I can't be bothered going back yet again. Just like that. We need another furnace here. And I'll show you how to cook food. Put the food in the top, just like we put the ores. And then you put the fuel in the bottom. So either wood, wooden items, any wooden items, or coal. And then that'll cook up your pork chop. Just like that. Bam, cooked pork chop. Now I can eat this and get my hunger back and heal me if I ever take any damage. Alright, so here's some natural spawning caves. Alright, I think that's pretty much the basics of Minecraft, guys. I think I'll go into a few more slightly extra stuff to maybe get you started on creating your own world and doing some advanced stuff. But here's a little trick I learned. If you press F3 and H, then, as you can see, it just says iron pickaxe, wooden pickaxe, stone pickaxe, iron sword. There's no details below that little thing. But if I press F3 and H again, now if we look at it, it tells me the durability, how much hits I've got left, how much hits it has maximum, and it also says the item number. So item number 267 is what this is. And just, let's go back to a creative world real quick. Save and quit. There's both the worlds I created today. They're still here. You can just rejoin them whenever you want. I'm going back to the creative world. That little trick, holding F3 and H at the same time, is extremely useful for this world. Because, just say I don't know the item code of something. It now tells me. So, this gold is 41. So I can go, give Hades and C 41. And it gave me one. See that? It gave me a gold block into my inventory. So when you get more advanced in building and you're on multiplayer servers, you can use that little trick to get the item codes really quick so you don't have to Google it. And you can build stuff way quicker by doing it that way. Alright. I think that's pretty much it. That pretty much explains the two main worlds, survival and creative. There is actually one more mode. But no one really uses it, but I will go into it. So, oh, everyone check your Facebook messages. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that for now. The shortcut to changing game mode is game mode 1, 0, and 2. Or 0, 1, and 2. Game mode 0 is survival. So now I'm playing survival mode. I'm not in creative anymore. As you can see, when I place these blocks, they disappear. And if I press E, it brings up the normal survival menu. But seeing as we're in a survival world, I can just type game mode 1. That'll bring me back to this creative, how I can just spawn anything in and place unlimited amount of them down without having to worry about resources. And the last game mode is game mode 2. This is adventure mode. It is pretty much the same as survival mode, but made for certain servers and adventure maps. Just say you built an amazing looking map and you wanted people to try and fight their way through it and find hidden chests. So you could make a maze. Yeah, that, that's a good example actually. I'm in creative, I built myself a maze. 
I host it up on a multiplayer server, and then I want my friends to join, but I don't want them to cheat, I would make that an adventure server. Because in adventure mode, I cannot, pl I cannot break these blocks. See this? I cannot break anything at all in adventure mode. So if I wanted someone to complete my maze, I would put them in adventure mode and give them no tools. Because you can actually break blocks in adventure mode, but you need the right tools. So let's go game mode 1. Give myself the right tools here just to explain it a bit. Because not many people understand adventure mode. Let's just try it with this. Because I don't know all of it, because no one plays this mode, as I said. Unless you're playing adventure modes. Game mode 2 to put me back to adventure mode. I cannot destroy this sand, but I can with a shovel. So just say you had like a checkpoint, you would put a chest, and you would put a shovel in the chest. They walk up to the chest, and they take the chest out, or they take the shovel out of the chest. So I'll just show that example right here. You would have a maze, just like this, blah blah blah. I'm going through the maze, I find the chest, open it up, there's a shovel in there. I can take the shovel out. I can now go back through the maze, and maybe you made a wall out of sand. So I couldn't previously destroy it in adventure mode, but with a shovel I could. So that's the use for this mode. Probably won't be using it that much, but if you do want to build adventure maps, like that scenario I just explained then, that's what you'd use game mode 2 for, which is adventure mode. Alright guys, I think that's pretty much it. Make sure you link this video to all your friends who want to learn how to play Minecraft. There's quite a lot of useful tips in it, and I think it's enough to get anyone started. So I'm just going to click multiplayer here now to show you this real quick. And here's a list of servers you have previously added. So these are all my servers. Feel free to join them. They are All these ones listed here are free to play. You can just click here, click join server, it'll log you in. And I've got heaps of different game modes. I've got specific things that I use plugins to adjust how to play the game. So this is not normal survival or normal creative. I have a creative server, but you can't interfere with other people's builds. Like, I put certain limitations on it. And I've also made other servers that are just like PvP. So let's actually do a quick example of this. I'm going to join this server. But if you wanted to add it, you would just click Add Server. Name it whatever you want. And in the server address, type in kitpvp.hatecraft.com. That'll bring you to the server I'm about to join and click done. But I don't need to because I've already got it added. I'm just going to click join server. And once I'm logged in, this is actually my hub server. So I'm actually flying around because I'm admin on here. But there's different rules. Let's type server kit pvp real quick. That'll bring me to the kit pvp server. And there's a little jumping puzzle up there. And a bunch of rules and explanations that explain how this server works bunch of commands you can type because multiplayer unlocks a whole new range of commands so what I'm gonna do here is I can PvP people now this is actually built spawn I can type slash PvP and it will give me this stuff I used a plugin to do this to host your own server you need to look up bucket and it's pretty easy to host your own server you just need to download the thing on the Minecraft server, um, the Minecraft forums, and once you've downloaded it, you just need to run it on your computer, and it will it'll open up a server. But it'll just be default survival and creative for you. If you want to make a server like me, you need to get coders and plugins to design plugins that basically change the way it is. So what I did is I got a coder to make it so when I type slash PVP, it gives me these items, and I also installed another plugin that makes that pop up in chat every now and then. And I also got another plugin that makes it so people can't fly or do it, kill each other in this zone. I made it so people can only kill each other out there. So basically in multiplayer, you just use plugins to put certain rules on your server to make it more fun. So to make this server kit PvP, I disabled PvP here so we can't hit each other. But if I jump over this wall, we can now hit each other. So now I'm in the PvP zone. I made it so that pops up in chat. Come PvP me, guys. And as you can see, now that I'm on multiplayer, anyone can join this server. So I got my friend... Well, these are they're kind of my friends. They're probably subscribers, so I'm counting that as friends. And here they are playing some kit PvP. 
Oh, and I made it so if you eat mushroom stews, it actually heals your hearts. And I'm just gonna... I'm actually right-clicking and left-clicking at the same time here to do some quicker damage. Oh, yeah, he got me. Good job. So I died, I got a click respawn. And that's how servers work, guys. It's basically the same as what I was showing you before, except plugins. You have to add plugins and get coders to develop certain rules for your server to change the way it works. So thanks to these guys. I'm actually going to leave this server now. And that's the end of the tutorial. Hopefully, hopefully that explained enough for all of you guys to get a great understanding of the game. Make sure to make sure to link this to all your girlfriends that you want to get to play Minecraft because that is exactly what I'm going to do now. Goldie actually has a YouTube if you want to check it out. The person I made this video for, she's Goldie Leofull. You can just type that into Google or YouTube and you'll find her channel. She's hopefully going to be uploading some Minecraft stuff soon once she's seen this tutorial and learned how to play. That'll be pretty good. And as always guys, have a great day and I'll see you later.